Well, hello. I'm happy to share with you today something I've been working with my students all summer on. Really fun, really fun. They're, we're going to make our own collage papers and we're going to make an abstract painting. And you know, a lot of times when I make abstract paintings, I'll take a um, toilet seat cover, which is like a tissue paper, and color it and use that for the tissue paper. That's kind of fun. Or I might get some special napkins, like the Klimt napkins, or just beautiful colors that I like, napkins, and do that. But this is really unique because we are going to make our own jelly papers. And to do this, we're going to use just very inexpensive, I bought these at Walmart. These are uh, very liquidy acrylics, so any acrylics will work. And we're also going to combine these papers with our watercolors. That's what's exciting. I have been working and working to design a lesson where we could make our own jelly papers using the acrylics and then combining it with watercolor. Now this particular piece doesn't have a watercolor combination. This is all jelly papers, but I just wanted to show you because it does reflect just the jelly papers. And I actually like this. This is a finished painting. Now in order to do this, first of all you have to have a canvas prepared. So any canvas that's already stretched, and I prefer the kind that is stapled in the back. So you've got the edges, and then what we do is put this coating on called cold press ground. It's made by Golden Paints. This, this is an excellent quality product. And they named it Core, Q-O-R. And it comes with two different grounds. There's the cold press, and there's also one called watercolor ground. The one I like is the cold press. If you read the instructions, it'll tell it all. Handmade, paper-like surface, apply thick or thin, let it dry. So now I put it on very thin and let it dry. In fact, I just painted this about 20 minutes ago. So if you wanna see how this is done, check the tips at the bottom of the page and it will tell you how to prepare a canvas for painting in watercolor. And then at the very end, we're going to put a wax over the surface to protect it because we are going to combine our papers with watercolor. So I'm good, we're, that tip will also explain how to use the Dorland's wax. So we're ready to get started. One of the first things I want to do is I want to just take, these are store-bought stamps. Okay, first of all, take most of the water out of your brush. You can see I'm using a flat brush. And come over here, grab a cool color. In this case, I've just got some Antwerp blue. And then I'm going to go into some Quin gold. Not even going to clean my brush. Then I'm going to, this way I like my paint dry. Then I'm going to go into some Quinacridone burnt orange. And this is very wet. So the first stamp I do is going to be too much. Too much. Then I'm going to do it again. And it's going to get pretty nice and I'm going to do it again and it's usually perfect and then I usually do it again and this gives me the ghost this is actually my favorite one and I'm just going to grab a couple of these this happens to be a stamp that I made and same thing I'm going to take off the extra water I'm going to start out with a little cool color. This is some French ultramarine blue and just roll it along. You're just trying to pick up those edges. Then I'm at this time I'll go into a little red, my Quinn Coral. But by mixing warm and cool I always end up with kind of a gray and I like that. Over here let's try a little the gold again. Okay, we're ready to start the stamping. Here's one. Ooh, look at that. We're going to do it again. Nice. And I don't think I'll get much of a ghost because I used a lot less water this time, but let's try it. Oh, just a little bit. That's good. So these are store-bought stamps. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to make your own stamps. 
Okay, now we're going to make our own stamp using a hot glue gun. These are really amazing. They're not very expensive. They run, I think this one's only about five bucks. And what I'm going to do, these are just leftover pieces of mat board. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little handle on this. So just folding over a piece of tape, we now have a handle on our stamp. That was easy. And I'll put it over here so you can see a little better. Now what we're going to do is we're just simply going to push on this glue stick and we're going to, as the glue comes out, we're just going to make it into an interesting stamp. Now don't forget, if you, if you write any dirty words, you have to write them backwards. <laughs> because everything you do is going to be in reverse. So I'm just having some fun here making some cool little shapes. And you don't, and they can just, anything, because it's going to stick to this board. You can build it up really a lot and it'll make a nice big shape, or you can do some little skinny shapes. Now before that dries, what you have to do is turn it over onto a piece of parchment paper. Now this is, you can buy this at the grocery store, parchment paper. So I'm just going to There we go again. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this over, and it's very important to use this parchment paper. And I'm just going to take and press very gently, and this is going to be a stamp now. As soon as this cools, it will release from the parchment paper. And you know, it's kind of funny. When uh, my friend Sue Primo from Florida, she and I came up with this idea. Actually, more her idea than mine, so thank you, Sue. And what we did is we went out to a dollar store and we tried everything. And it stuck to everything. It, it did work putting it on an oiled cookie sheet, but who wants to carry around an oiled cookie sheet? So one day I happened to remember parchment paper. Look at that. This is a lovely little stamp, and I'll, you'll see me using it a little later. So now we made our own stamp. Now the next thing I want to show you how to do is to make your own stencil. Again, we need the parchment paper. So we're going to put that down. And we're also going to use a second piece of mat board to press it. Okay, now we're going to need two pieces of parchment paper because we're going to form a sandwich here with the hot glue, press it with this board, and we're going to have our own stencil. I'll show you one. Here's one I made. And you can see I've been using it because it's toned. But see, it's very flat because I designed it. And then I put another parchment paper over it. And then I flattened it. So what I'm going to do is show you how, because the glue gets cold, sometimes what I do is I'll take several of these and put them together and form a, a big one, like you see there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of join these together. Now, when you do stencils like this, you have to build bridges. In other words, you have to have these connected. When this runs out, you just stick some more in. Give it a... Now, look at how easy this is. I'm just going to join these together. And then over here, I'll, mark, I'll start my own. Now you just can't do lines like that, that aren't connected. They have to have bridges, and they have to be somehow connected. And now you can see I've got, they're all joined together. And now I'm going to put the second piece of parchment paper down. And this one over the top, and we're going to press it down. And this is making it flat. It's pretty cool. So we're going to have our own homemade stencil. So when this cools, we'll be able to, whoops, I'll wait a minute. I always get a little antsy. While this is cooling, I'm going to tell you about the next thing you're going to need. 
The next thing you're going to need is what's called a jelly plate. And it's called a jelly plate because it's made from gelatin. And a lot of real purists like to make just gelatin plates. We're talking gelatin and water. And they keep it in their refrigerator and they only work for about a month and they have to do another one. But I kept looking and I found a recipe that uses glycerin in it. And that's the plasticizing agent that makes this jelly plate permanent. So I've been using this jelly plate over and over and over. And it's fabulous. Now this is the store-bought one. You can see I keep it between two pieces of acrylic. You have these acrylics in your little gift box. So this is what a jelly plate looks like, especially one that's been used many, many times. Now, I gave you a recipe. I gave you a recipe in the box how to make your own jelly plate. And this is so simple. Just read the directions. It takes two six ounce bottles of glycerin. You can get those at Walmart for $3.88. Seven packets of Knox unflavored gelatin. You can get that at your local grocery store. And one lady at my Cheap Joe's class put seven boxes in hers. She forgot that it said packets. And you know what? You could have run over her jelly plate with a Mack truck, but it worked like a charm. <laughs> So seven packets of the unflavored gelatin and just follow the easy directions 15 minutes later, you are going to have your own homemade jelly plate. And this is what they look like. Now here's one that's been used over and over again. And every now and then this will happen. See how it's ripped? All you do is rip it into more pieces, put it into a microwavable bowl, and put it in your microwave for about two minutes until it's clear again and just pour it into a pan and you can recycle it. In fact, if I, as I think about it, I think this has probably been remelted three or four times. So you'll, it's, it's a very inexpensive and easy project. Okay, now we're ready to take this off. Ta-da! As soon as it cools, you can see you get a beautiful release. Now look at I've got a nice big stencil ready to ink up and make some beautiful patterns with. So we have one more project we're going to do before we start making our collage paper. Well, after all our preparation, we're ready to go. I just wanted to back up a little bit and share with you that the concept of working with collage papers with watercolor is not new for me. I love doing that. This, in fact, this, this is a painting I did years and years ago. And, you know, like there's some McCall's patterns in here and napkins and all kinds of fun stamping. And I just, I really love this. But the thing is, it's not original. What I want to do today is share with you how to make your own original papers using this jelly plate. Now here's another lesson that I have really enjoyed sharing with people. And that is to take these very meaningful napkins. These came from Germany and they were hard to get. I tried to get them off the internet. It wasn't easy and I was very lucky to have a, a friend in Germany who was able to get these for me. But these beautiful napkins that represent Klimt's work, which I, I'm a big fan of Klimt. So I'm not just going to glue the napkin down and it looks like the kiss. You can see what I did is I ripped it up Here's the actual face. Here's the actual face. And I just ripped it and then drew in part of the face. And then I just assembled these in various places and put it together as an abstract painting. Added some drawing, added some color sanding with uh, using a stencil. And I'm actually really happy with this painting. But I was ready to move on. Now how many times can you paint a picture from a napkin. That's somebody else's design. So we're going to go for it today. Okay, before we start, I'm going to recommend that you put a coating on your fingers. This, there's this really good one called Gloves in a Bottle. Or if you don't, if you really want to protect yourself, because we are going to be working with acrylics, you can just use some plastic gloves. But I'm a big fan 
of this gloves in a bottle. And we'll just put this on and give it a chance to dry and we'll be all set to go. And I'm also going to start by setting up a stencil. Now this is a store-bought stencil. Earlier you saw me make the stencil. I still, I'll still, i be using this later. But for right now, I need a stencil to set up right here on the table. And I thought I'd treat myself to a new one. It's really funny. These stencils, after they've been used by an entire class over and over again, the difference between this new stencil and the one that I have over here is probably about a pound and a half. I'm telling you. Look at this. It's just unbelievable. It's just so thick with acrylic. It's still usable, but like I say, I just want to treat myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this on the table, and then we discussed our plate. This is a store-bought jelly plate, and I'm going to put the stencil down here with a piece of this unwaxed deli paper over the top. Now the paper you choose is really important and I did a lot of research because I wanted this to be suitable for working on watercolor, with watercolor on canvas. So I started looking all over and I tried the wax papers, they work fine if you're an acrylic artist, but I want to work with watercolor. So I found this menu tissue through Amazon Prime. I had to buy 10,000 sheets at a time. <laughs> so if you need some, you can write to us, we'll send you any number of sheets you'd like. And it's a wonderful product. You're going to see as I work, it, it's just, it's perfect. And so I'm going to put one sheet on here. And then the um, pad itself, I'm just going to start inking it up. So these are acrylics. And I just went to Walmart and picked out some colors that I really like. So I've got several golds, a royal gold, an antique gold, and pure gold. Anyone's fine. I'll probably use them all. And then I thought it would be fun to work in, in an assortment of these lovely colors. This one I see has a little glitter in it. That ought to be interesting. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> so I'm going to just start by giving it a little quick shake. And what I like about these is they're very fluid. So I'm just going to start with a little black. You don't need much ink. One of the biggest problems, people put too much ink on. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of gold at this time too. And I'm going to take a four inch roller. This is a soft four inch roller. And I'm not going to do a real slick rolling job. I just want to get it to kind of go in here. And then the first thing I'm going to do is just clean off my roller by rollering over the top of the stencil. Pretty cool. So we'll put another one down. Let's change the stencil. We're going to use this one again later. This is a fun little citrus stencil here. And see, I love these broken shapes. You'll see why later. This, these are going to be incredible. So I'm just kind of cleaning up here a little bit. Oh, this, this is beautiful. Oh, I'm all set. Now what I'm going to do is take another one and just drop it on here and do this. And see, here's another, I really like this. This has these really interesting broken shapes. I like the little bit of gold in there. Lovely. And I'm going to just take now a little bit of this gold again. In fact, I'm going to start, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to put ever so little black. And I never clean the plate until I'm done. I 
clean the roller by going over a piece of paper, over a stencil, or over leaves, or over any kind of textural surface. So we're going to have this ready to go again. And now I'm just going to ink this a bit, again with these little broken shapes. Nice. And this time I'm going to take this gold and just whip it around into some very, oh, look how pretty. Oh, I love this. So now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to lightly touch this because I want those patterns. So watch this. Isn't that fun? It just has those patterns on it. And if you look behind me here, you can see all these lovely patterns just flipping around here. These were just ripped out like this. You'll see me do it and glued down over the surface. And the best part is, I'm probably going to get who knows how many out of this. So I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to touch it lightly. Lift it up. Nice. And see, I like the broken black shapes in addition to this. This is, this is prime. This is really great. I'll be using this when I produce my painting. And we're ready to do another one. Now, each time I do this, you can see there's a little bit less paint. So this time, I'm going to push a lot harder. It's going to start to clean it up. Oh, I love it. Look at that. <laughs> you might say, well, you're just doing the same thing over and over again, but I'm really not. Each one of these has a very unique quality. Now we're ready to just begin a two-part lesson. Watch this now. I'm going to take just a little bit more black. And this time I'm going to roller it right out. Get the entire surface black. I'll mix in that little bit of gold that's left. I actually love any kind of remnant from a previous pull because it gives it just gives such a nice little pattern. Again, we have to clean our roller. Some people put it in a container of water. I wouldn't think of it. I love these just the way they are. Okay, now this time I'm going to just put a paper on the table and I'm going to start stamping on here. And whenever I stamp on here, I'm going to put it over here. So what we're doing is we're just making patterns. Now a lot of people when they're working on jelly prints like this, they actually make finished mono prints. And that's a very legitimate thing to do. I personally just like making my own paper. So now there's patterns on here. There's the remnant of that last gold plus the new black. So we're just going to keep building up all these new layers. And this time, I'm going to roll it with my roller. You can see my roller's clean, just rolling it over those stencils. And I bet you anything now, my plate's going to come out pretty clean. Look at that. Nice. Nice, I love all that, kind of antique -y looking. If you want to clean your plates, we recommend using baby wipes. <laughs> so I always have a container nearby. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start over this time now. I'm finally going to give in, clean my palette here, and do a whole new thing. And these baby wipes are great for cleaning up your hands afterwards. 
They're, per they're just perfect, just ideal. Okay, this time we're going to have some real fun. Remember that stencil I just opened? I'm going to place this over this newly inked surface. First thing I'm going to do is put a, another unwaxed deli paper over this. And I'm going to just clean, oh, clean this right out. I'm going to rub and get it into every, every one of these. I want it perfect. I want to be able to see this stencil, every edge. Look at that. Okay, so now we're going to lift this up. And you can see we have the image in reverse. And the plate is relatively clean. I'm going to do another cleaning. And there's only going to be, a, this is going to be a ghost. And see, the ghosts are the best. You'll find out why later. But the ghost is really, really important. So get all those corners again. I could have used my homemade stencil, but I just wanted to try this one. Oops. Oh, I've got two papers. I'm going, What's going on here? Ah, look at that. I had two papers on there. Now we're going to peel this off. Now the plate is really clean. And see, we have a lovely ghost. I like this. Now is going to be the exciting part. I'm going to take a gold, a pure gold. We'll see what that one's like. And I'm just going to, now I haven't removed the stencil. This is the trick. A lot of people forget this part. Don't lift the stencil. Put this gold right on top. And now we're going to roll this out. Ooh, it's a little heavy. It's going to be okay. Now we need to roll this on top. And you know what I have here? That homemade stencil. You can't see it because it's white. But you'll see it now. So I'm cleaning the roller. And you'll be surprised another one of those I'll be using. Doesn't look like a lot, but it's got a lot of beautiful color on there. So now we're going to take and lift the gold off of here. And I did get a little heavy. We're going to have to do this a couple of times. So we're going to clean this up. Oh, that's fun. So now we have a lovely, just the gold. And now we're going to have to clean both sides of this. So here's what I do. First I put down a clean paper. I lift this up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I put it down. Put another one on top. Because there's paint on both sides. And now I'm going to roll this. Oh, I can't wait to print that one. But now look at what I've got. I've got this lovely ghost print. My stencil's clean. <laughs> and look at this. That is beautiful. Look at the gold in there. And the little nips of gold. Oh, that's gorgeous. But this is what it's all about. Right now the stencil's off. And we have the two colors. Ta-da! Drum roll, please. And so now we're going to print this. And any stencil will work. I just took this one because it, I think visually it's beautiful. So here we go. The first pull. Oh, that is gorgeous. And see, I'm never going to print this like a tree. I'm going to rip this up and use these beautiful patterns. Oh, this is fun. So now there's two pulls from that same. This one. And now we're 
we're going to do another pull. This is going to be my favorite one. And see, I like to use my hands. They don't get all that dirty. I could just use the roll, the brayer. Now we're going to pull this one. Oh, I love these ghosts. Look at that. Fantastic. Wow. Now we, we still have another ghost on here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing with these new colors. So now we're going to move into a little color here. I'm going to try a little bit of the glitter too. So like I say, I never, I never change my, clean my palette unless it's a real mess. I figure you can clean your roller on top of a stencil. Just keep going. Let the colors mix. Oh, this is already pretty cool. So here we go again. This time we're going to do some color. And a lot of times I really just like doing without a stencil. I'll just pick up some of this. My favorite thing to do is to lay down some leaves. Unfortunately, it's about 20 below zero outside and there are no leaves. But <laughs> that's the way it goes. Uh, let me just show you some other... Some other things you can use. Now this, this is so pretty. I just want to, I just have to print this. See, I love these broken shapes. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's beautiful. I think I'm going to add some more and do some more of these broken shapes. Because what we're doing is we're designing papers that we're going to use for our abstract. So here we go again. How fun is that? Look how pretty. Oh yeah, well we gotta do a print of that. And I might just clean this up on top of another stencil. This is a really cool stencil. Isn't that a beautiful mosaic pattern? We'll put it here. I'll roll this on there. It's hard to tell that we're getting anything, but it's going to be lovely. A shelf paper. I bought it at the dollar store. <laughs> oh, look at that. So we can stamp and get some nice polka dots. <laughs> now we're ready to make a print of this. Polka dots, interesting patterns. One of the things I have found the students come up with the best ideas. You don't think I thought of all these ideas. I've been doing this all summer with the students, and the ideas that come up are fantastic. Oh my gosh, look at that. Patterns of color, little polka dots. I love it. We gotta do another one. So you've got 50 of this on wax paper in your little gift box. You'll buzz through those in no time. Now these are great. One of the things that we're concerned about when we work on our abstract are creating edges that are beautiful transitions. See this going from that color into those dots. Every one of this, one of, every shape on here is a beautiful transition. Ooh, I can't wait to do this. One more. We need those transitions. Okay. Yep, we got a few more. So I'm going to repeat that last lesson. So we're going to just squeeze out some of this paint. This time I'm going to go from light to dark. So this is repetition, but I think it's important. First of all, get a nice, as clean as you can. Just a nice 
layer. Always clean your layer. We'll put this down. Now, this time I'm going to do this lovely pattern. So I'll put this down. Next thing, put the paper over the top and clean out, clean this out. Get into all of these little, little holes. And you can, this is why I like to use my fingers. See, if you do a brayer, it just rolls over the top. You have to get in with your fingers into each one of those. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, I'll see, and there's a little residue of the gold on there. Oh, this is lovely. Look at that. Now, for my second color, I could use gold. I could use black. I could use a dark blue. I think I'll use the black. So we'll go from light to dark this time. So leave the stencil on. Drizzle on a little bit of paint. Now, not too much. Most people use too much. I'm warning you again. Just enough, because you can work it, work it, and eventually you'll get a nice, clean everywhere. Oh, this is going to be fun. Always remember to clean, clean this off. Now, this is a reverse of that particular stencil. Let's see what happens. Here comes the fun. I'm going to do one bowl first. I'm not pressing real hard. I'm just going to get some of that extra paint off. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Now remember we have to clean this. So we're going to lift this up. Ooh, isn't that pretty? And we're going to make a sandwich with this. And clean both sides at once. Clean both sides at once. There we have just a lovely little ghost. And then when we pick this one up, oh, that's pretty cute. I love these ghosts. Here we go. Here's our prize. We're going to just slip this on here. I don't know if you've noticed, but my chair keeps sinking down. <laughs> okay, I'm really pushing this good. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. See, I like the fact that I took off some of the extra black on this pull so that I would just have the remnant of the black and the blue, bluish green. Now we're going to do another one. These ghosts are the best. Now you can tell that this paper is it's a little bit, it's a little bit dry. So what I do when that happens is I just simply take my fine mister, give it a little spray, one more, put it down, ah, now it's clean enough. So you can see, I, I always get upset when I see people cleaning their plate when they've got these beautiful ghosts. Oh my gosh. So now we need to put another color over this. I like to use a transparent color. My very last pull, this will be my last pull now. I'm going to put a transparent color over this. Now, this is my last death defining act. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use quinacridone nickel ozo gold. I happen to know this is a transparent color. Any color will do this. I just personally like transparent because I want to see all of this. 
So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit. Now we're going to roller it up. And see what I mean by transparent? You can see right through it. Love this. And it's activating the paint. This should be a pretty spectacular one. There's my new one that I made. So now I'm cleaning off the brayer. Isn't that fun? Oh, that's pretty. I love that color. So now let's see what we get. We should have a little blue, a little black, and this beautiful nickel ozzo. transitions. This is what I mean about transitions. When you look here, you can see the pattern of this dark path. That's the first thing we're going to do. But then all these transitions going from the dark transition into the light. From the dark transition into the light. So little things like this are perfect for those transitions. So don't overlook cleaning your plate so that you get those lovely transitions. So we're going to clean things up here, and when I get back, we're going to build an abstract painting. Well, we're going to start the fun now. We're going to take some of these papers and design this path of interesting movement through here. Whenever I do an abstract painting, I don't just think of it as sticking something down anywhere I feel like it because it's an abstract. I think about it as a design experience. And I'm especially interested in this dark path. And it's kind of funny, as I was looking around the studio to share things with you here, I found two of these that are very similar. And I went, wow, I could, they almost go together like that. Hmm. So I was playing around with it. And honest, I cannot believe this. But look at this. It's beautiful. I, I have a diptych. The colors are almost identical. I just need to pull a little bit of gold over here because see whenever you're doing a diptych you want the movement to transfer across and that actually transfers pretty good almost has a swooping movement up out and down again so didn't even know it until today I, I actually have a diptych here for those of you who are probably wondering what is a diptych a diptych is when you put two paintings together you get the movement, the colors, they look like one. You sign it once, it's considered one painting. If I had a third one here, it would be a triptych. And um, I've even been in shows where people have had as many as seven of these in a row. And I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, you know, seven, that would be a sep. That would be a septic. <laughs> The size I've chosen for today is a 16 by 16 square. And I have in your little gift pack, you're going to find these three. We probably won't have paint on them, but you never know. Anyway, these three things are kind of cool. What I do before I start an abstract is I like to think about the design and the movement. And how are you going to lead the viewer through the picture? So all of these are just little idea sketches that I kind of thought about. And I really, I just love this. This is one of my favorite things to do. And so you'll notice on most of them, I have a little square left there for you to work with. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little design right now. And because I'm working with a square, of course I'm going to start with my square shape. And whenever I'm doing this, I'm always thinking about a vertical and a horizontal. This becomes the cruciform composition, where you have a vertical shape that crosses when the horizontal shape goes over it. And of course, this becomes your center of interest. This is where you want to have the most interesting shapes. Things are overlapping, interlocking. But of course, just a straight cruciform, I, I find it kind of boring. I think it's time to, to get a little different movement going. So let's say we start with our dark in the corner here. And then we're, we're just about to move across and drop down here. Now see, this could be our horizontal, similar to that. And then I like to start with my vertical and interlock. And I'm, I'm thinking about having this vertical shape start here. I like to go all the way to the edge of the paper. So if I were to start here and come down, some kind of movement across here, and instead of going off exactly in the same position, let's move it over here a little bit more. So now we've got these shapes, and now we, we need to start thinking about where they interlock. How much more interesting can we make these? Maybe we could even design in some straight shapes. I love that. If you'll notice back here, see there are actually some lines that intersect here. That, that's one of my very favorite things to do. So depending on how, how it goes here, we might, might end up with something like that. So now I want to have another break coming down. Hmm. Let me see. I think I'll kind of wipe out this corner. And something coming down in here. So this is this is kind of how I'm thinking about it. I'm not going to make any marks on the canvas, but I will keep this handy. And we're going to be doing our gluing with Yes Paste. Yes Paste leaves a workable surface. It's absolutely perfect for watercolor. And as you recall now, this has that core cold press finish on it. So we'll be able to paint on it later. So I'm going to start with the papers, develop this path of dark, representing the cruciform. And as I'm gluing, I'm going to use this very lean yes paste. In fact, I leave the cover off all the time and it's gotten a little bit thick. I'll just add a little water. It's a water-based glue. It's fantastic. Okay, now whenever you're using this glue, you want to wipe away most of it. Often I see students, they just get too much glue and it stays sticky forever. So just by wiping off most of the glue before you start, it should work out really well. Now, when you look over your selection of papers, these are some of the hardest ones to work with. They, they just have too much going on. So my preference is to have some of these that have like these broken shapes. Ooh, this one looks really interesting. So I'm going to start with this. And we're just going to rip off a piece. And I always put a little glue down first. And then we'll put this down. And look at that. It is immediate. It's just like you took some paint and put it on there. So I'm going to have some more here interlocking with this. Oh gosh, this is fun. So now I'm thinking about this movement through here. Wipe off most of my glue, put this down, put this here, go on top of it. Very nice. And then if I want to add a little do that. I can. I don't waste any of this. 
And because it's clear, look at this, I can put this over the top and it's you don't even see it. And this is kind of a nice long skinny one here. I like this. I might I'm actually thinking about doing some kind of a strong shape here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down. Look at that. Ooh, that's nice. And meanwhile, we've got these lovely gold pieces that you saw me just drizzle on there. Look at that. Oh, oh this is fun. Now I'm thinking about my pattern. I'm not a slave to that, but I do like to think about it. So I'm going to start going back up again now. So I'm going to put this up. And I'm going to come over here, come down a little bit. Oh, I did, I've still got all kinds of paper left. This is fun. So now I want to connect these two. So I'm just going to put these, look at that, nice connection. And now I want to get this movement going down and attaching over here. I think I'll start first of all with the attachment. Now very often I work with a really deep profile. This happens to be a very narrow profile. But if I had the deeper profile, I would purposely design it to go around those edges. Very important. Okay, here we go. We're gonna now start our movement down here. Remember the glue first. Then you put this down, and then you press on top. And I like to use a flat brush. It, it really presses down well. Beautiful adhesion. This is, this is looking good. <laughs> now I want to get all the way to the bottom. And remember, I went off here, so I'm just going to come over here a little bit. I'm always thinking about where is this attachment going to be. There, yeah, that's working out good. And now I'll pull this together. And see how I can put a piece over the top? You never see it. That one just folded over, not a problem. <laughs> now look at this. This is kind of interesting. You can see this was where I cleaned off the brayer. And look at some of these beautiful edges blended. The gold and the black are blended together. Wow, this is really nice. So now I'm going to start adding this. These are going to become transitional areas. I like this. And I'm going to start building up the movement. Let's see, I'm going to start thinking now about my transitions, and these are beautiful transitions. Oh, look, we got a little pink on there too. Okay, now this is, this is a beautiful transition. It's soft, and so I'm just going to take some of these pieces, and I'm purposely going to put them in a position where they'll be a, a lovely transitional area. Kind of fun too, it's adding a little bit of warm color. I didn't expect that. Now see a hard edge like that is hard to deal with. That's when I want to have these soft edges like this, transitional shapes. So what I'm going to do is show you a nice little trick right now. Right where that hard edge is, put a little glue and I'm going to put this here and see what we have now? That hard edge is now within this shape and over here we have better transitional areas. Let's do some more here. Oh, better. And let's go right up off the top here. I like, right now it's starting to go across too much. I want to take it up here, around the corner. Nice. 
Oh my goodness, I love this. So this has a lot of interesting things, including some straight edges. You know, and I would like to develop like a little pattern that comes down. I'm going to slip it right in here. It's approximately at the one-third. We like that. Glue first, right in here. Put it down. Oh, isn't that fun? Here's another line I like. So I think I'm going to do another divisional thing. I'm going to continue this line. Nice. But I found another line. Oh, this is too exciting. So now I think it would be nice to have another line coming in, maybe all the way off the top here. Remember to keep wiping off the brush. Don't ever put it on full of glue. I'm going to take this off at a different angle here. There, nice. Now if we want to pick up on those straight edges, one of the easiest ways to do it is with a pair of scissors. Here's a nice solid piece. Let's just glue this down. Right along that edge. There. Now this other side, oh that's fun, here's another, look at those beautiful shapes, oh my goodness. So you'll notice I never put really big shapes down like that. I usually kind of break it up a little bit. Get rid of the edges. And we need to start thinking transitions again. And I think it would be nice to come down. You can see I had a vision to come down here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come into this area just with some nice soft shapes. Now if you forget to put the glue down, you're in trouble. <laughs> there we go. Glue first, then the papers. Now it's always good to stop for a minute, evaluate what you have. I kind of like what's happening here. After evaluating where I want to go with this piece, I've decided to stay with the gold. So now I'm going to start ripping in ah, some of these. These often make very nice transitional shapes. See, when you start getting hard, hard edges like that, that's when you want to break out with something like this. Beautiful. See, these are, this is perfect for that softer, interesting edge. I like that. Now this is also very hard, edgy, just looks like a piece of ripped paper. You need to be sensitive to these areas so that you have connecting areas and you have these soft edges coming out. Really makes a big difference. Here's a nice little area right here. Look at that. Just so simple. We're going to put this here. Like it. Another one down here. And a 
another one, like a little bridge over here. I like those, I love those bridges. See how this is kind of floating? We need to start thinking about connecting it. Look at that. Here's another straight edge. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love it. Look at all that little bit. A line, a cut edge. This was built in. We have that nice shape going there. Now we have a few more of these. I'm going to build a few more connecting shapes. I have a little edge going out here. I think I like that. I do like that idea. So I'm going to pull this out. There we go. And then I think it's time to come around the edge here. So we're getting close to our basic design. See this this is this is looking pretty good. So now we're, it's time to think about adding color, and it's time to think about doing some color sanding. I might come in with some of these crayons. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm still thinking about running a little bit of this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. We gotta do just a little bit of this. It's just so lovely. So again, this could be a very nice little connecting area up here. That's nice. Maybe a little connection down here. And maybe another one over here. See how that just looks like a ripped edge? As soon as we add this, it just looks more interesting. It really does make a difference. <laughs> now I've got to start being selective. We're getting, we're getting close. Right over here, maybe. See, these are like basting stitches. In fact, speaking about basting stitches, I forgot to mention. One of the groups of people that really, really enjoy this jelly printing are quilters. They actually print a lot of their own fabric using this jelly print. So while they're working with their own fabric, we're working with our own collage paper. It's really fun. So I think I need just a little bit more of this, these dark lines right down here, taking us off the bottom. Done. Now, remember those lovely stamps that we did? This, you saw me stamp this. This is on a beautiful Onru paper. It's from Thailand. It's only 10 grams. Absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few more of these shapes. Just glue this down. Now this is this says watercolor. You can see I'm adding a little bit more of this warm color. Oh, that looks nice. So if, if you happen to be low on these transitional shapes, I had lots of them because I, I was prepared. I knew I would need those. But see now, as I look at this, look at this hard, ripped edge. Ew. Those are the areas you want to soften. So now just put a little there, a little glue. Now watch this. Just adding this soft stamp here. I love this. So these are, these are important. It's all about the edges. And we still have more tricks to pull out of the bag. So I don't really need too many more of the stamps, so I'm going to stop at this point. But now the next thing I'm going to do is switch to my watercolors. 
Ooh, ooh, this is exciting. Now I was originally going to do the blues and greens. And so I have all my blue green accoutrements out here. You'll notice I, orga I organized my crayons here. So I have my warm crayons here and my cooler crayons here. And uh, I don't see some of the colors that I want in this particular group. I'm going to look at my Aha! These are woodless watercolor pencils. And these are closer to some of the colors that I'm interested in. So I have a, a red brown. Kind of an orangey. Well, let's put some color down here and decide what we're going to do. We have a lot of gold, so I think one of the first things I'm going to do is to come in and paint with some of my Quinn gold. Oh, isn't that fun? It just, it's so beautiful. And we'll just throw a little color down here. And think of this as the connections. If I want to, I could do the whole thing wet into wet. But I'm going to leave some hard edges just in case I just, I'm going to leave it dry and I'll just wet it as I go. So you can see how quickly you can pull this together. Look how beautifully that surface takes the watercolor. This would not have worked if we hadn't put that core on here. It's just beautiful. Another fun thing is, look what happens when I touch these pieces of en rue that I glued down. See, now there's a piece right here. You'll see it absorbs the color. See how it absorbs the color? It's darker. See that darker shape there? That's the, and over here, that's that en route paper. Here's another one. I love that. So I'm kind of following the shapes that are here. And just, just doing one color at this point. So this is all Quinn Gold, but I do like that orangey color. I think I might have to go into a little bit of that. Quinacridone Burnt Orange, look out, move over. This is a beautiful earthy, earthy color. Oof, I love that color. And look how it's getting absorbed by that beautiful collage paper. And see, I don't even mind a few hard edges here. I think it's kind of fun. Now I put a little orange on this side. Now I'm going to reverse it over here. Come in over here. Go up off the top. And then I'm going to come in with just a little water and soften that edge. So when you're painting with the watercolor, it'll be just like paper, a paper surface. You don't have to do anything special. Hmm, nice. Well, now we need to think about maybe going off the page over here. And I'm thinking about how I can just add some very subtle textures. And in order to do it with color sanding, my whole surface has to be wet. So I'm just going to wet it with my sprayer right now. And remember this guy? Like right down in here, I'm just going to come in with a little color sanding. I'm going to use color, very similar to the color that's here. And I'm just going to use this number 100 grit sandpaper. Now coming in here right, right in the same, almost the same exact color. Look at that. 
just going to come in soft, a little bit of soft color here. And then this is kind of a ochre color. Of course, I should have changed my sandpaper. <laughs> That's okay. So you can see now we've got, I think the colors are looking pretty good. We're going to lift this off very carefully. Oh yeah, isn't that nice? And once you've done your sanding, it's important then to come in with additional soft misting. So I'm just going to do a little bit of misting. And I'd like to repeat this in several places. So I'm thinking it might look kind of nice, like right about in here. And you'll notice I don't want this straight edge. I could. If I wanted a straight edge, I could line it up here. Hmm, I might think about that. But I just love this particular edge right in here. So what I think I'm going to do is just let this kind of branch out here. Perfect. I'm going to take the same color. And I usually put the same color in the same color. So I'll put a little bit of this orangey color here. And here. Just happen to have a little hole there. And then I'm going to take the same ochre color over here. Ah, nice. And then what we want to do is sand, excuse me, what we want to do is spray into that sanding. You can actually see it get darker as we're doing this and soften up. Oh, I like, I like this. Now we need one more, and I'm thinking maybe just a little bit right in here. I like to do things in threes. And this is very wet. So. Just going to dry it a little bit. Same thing, I'm going to pick this lovely little corner right here. And the same colors. Just a little bit coming out here. Just a little bit of that ochre color. It's hard to tell there's any difference, but. And then always carefully remove this. And always spray. So just a little bit of spray. And you'll notice this is getting darker as we spray it. Well, once we've done the color sanding, it's best to wait, let it dry then reevaluate, maybe add a few more papers. But right now, this is so delicate, it just has to wait. So I'll be back. Well, the piece is dry. I think it's kind of fun. We still have a few more tricks. Now, one of the things I do like the way this line is quite pronounced. It's, it's not real obvious, but if you all of a sudden you notice it. But this one isn't quite making it yet. So I'm just going to grab a straight edge here, cut it out, rip it out of here, and I'm just going to pick it up. We'll take a little glue, I always wipe the glue off, and then I could do this somewhere in here. Perfect. So right about in here, I'm going to add a little emphasis on this line. 
Ah, yes, that's healthy. And let me just do another one. Here's a dark spot right here. So I'll just rip this out. And what I like to do is reverse them. So let's do a reversal here. So I'll put this dark coming up in here. Oh yeah. That's nice. Just that easy. We can do that. And let's do another one. Oh. So I'm just going to cut now another straight edge. Now go up here around the corner. Glue first. Go around the corner. We'll pick this straight edge up right about in here. Now it feels so much better. You're see, you're, you get to see the two shapes like it. Now for my last death defying act, look at this. Remember when we went out and sprayed all these lines? Well if I wanted to I could just shake the can up really good and give it, give it a nice little random coating. You never know where they're going to go. I always make the sign of the cross. <laughs> but here what I, I'm going to do now is show you how with this wonderful paper I can actually design where I want these. So I might decide to do something in here. And I might decide to add a line here. Now it won't look random like it does when you spray it. But it will, it'll be controlled. Oh now make sure you put these with the, the paint out. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So here's a nice busy little spot here. Look at that. Ooh, where are we going to do that? I think that should go probably right about in here. Coming around. And I am really surprised how long it took me to figure this out. The whole idea that you can just do this, it's amazing. There, just a little string coming out. Nice. String over here. A little bit up here. Wow, it's just a miracle the way it landed exactly where I wanted it. I think we need to do another one. I'm mostly picking the gold. Coming right through here. And then it's the same thing. This paper is so lightweight, it's only 10 grams. It's extremely lightweight. So I don't have to glue first. I can just set it where I want it, and the glue will penetrate right through. So again, I'm just wiping the glue off, and then I put it down and try to get a nice, smooth application. Now I have to be careful because until I put that wax on these, they're very delicate. So if I if I get that too wet, they're gonna smear. So I'm being yeah, very careful. Nice. I think it's done. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna let this dry. Really, really, really dry. And tomorrow I'm going to take the Dorland's wax and I'll put it on with a glove on my hand and we'll smear that all over, heat it up and we have a finished painting ready to hang on the wall. No glass, no mat, no frame. Well, maybe a frame, <laughs> but definitely no glass and no mat. Well, I've had a little time to look at this. It's the next day and I'm very pleased with, with the piece. I do like these very you know, just a hint of those shapes. And I'm very happy with the little lines that are dancing around. It just adds an energy that I think completes the painting. But I am I was comparing it to some of the other paintings around my studio. And I'll show you what I mean. This, for example, 
you can see the dynamics of this where you have the full range of light even some whites that I added that I'm going to share with you in a bit and a lot of nice mid-tones and so I don't I don't have that dynamic of all these different um, shapes of color so I always like to think about it just a little bit more here's another one that's really dynamic you can see the dominance of the warm colors and the strong darks. I don't want to go that dark. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite paintings here in the studio. I actually did this with a credit card. Just it came around and pushed that paint around and it happened so fast. I just said, that's it. I added a few little tones of color and I also wanted to point out how I like to put my color into a path. See how that leads the viewer's eye through the painting. That's really nice. And then the same with this red. You come around and you link it here and then up and through here and out. So I really like doing that with color where you link it. Even the whites are linked together and form a movement through the painting. So it's something to think about when you're finishing a painting. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. I think I'm just going to add a little bit more of this particular deeper color. Now these are some jelly shapes that I, I made these on the jelly plate, but I used this on roux paper. That, that's really nice. Because it's such a lightweight paper, we can just set it down and we don't have to put the glue down first. Also, I can think about where do I want this? Actually, I like it right there. So just this quickly, I can put that down. Just make sure you have enough glue to penetrate through that paper and bond it right onto the surface. And I think we need now to link that a little bit. And the good news is, with this particular glue, if I don't like it, all I do, wet it and lift it right off. So you can't do that with acrylic medium, but you can with this glue, yes paste. So we're going to try linking this together. See, that's kind of nice, this little path. And I think I'll continue with it over here, right in here. You can always get brave when you know that you can change it later. <laughs> now I'm going to cut this to a straight edge and I'm going to follow this pattern here. Nice. Oh, that worked out great. And then same over here. I'm going to cut a little piece here. And pick up this color over here. Oops. Try that again. And then whenever I start that, color next to an edge like this, I like to continue it just a little bit. So it's not just in one place. So we're going to give it a little bit of movement here. And I might even carry it down here. So you can see how easy it is with these jelly papers just to, to have this nice movement going through there. I like that. I'm going to do one more of the cut edge right down here. So again, we'll cut this. Don't forget to wipe the brush off. See, and I also like to reverse these things. It's more like it. 
So if I did it on this side, I came back and did it on this side. Again, I'm just going to add a little bit to carry it out. Wow, I think that improves it a lot. So we're going to, at this point, we're going to say it's done. And I have another. And here's another option. Isn't that stunning? This is a frame. It's a new style of frame that we have. You can see it has four holes here for screws. So all you do is drop this in, come up through the back with the screws, and then I always string my wire inside here, about a third of the way down. And you'll see there's a tip down below that tells how to do the framing, where to put the wire and all that. And so there you have what looks now like a finished painting. Love it. And you know what? This is really amazing when you think about this, this um, canvas was not very expensive. I think it was only about, my guess, around $10. This frame is about $30. And for $40, I've got a product that's worth a lot more. I hope it goes well for you. I wanted to add a little gallery of paintings at the end here. These are some of the variations you can do. So this started out with jelly papers, but you can see I've added some gold leaf, which really adds a touch of elegance. And again, there's a tip at the bottom of this lesson that tells you how to apply the gold leaf. Here's another possibility. I think I may have shown you this before, but it's okay, because you need to see how cool it is to add just a pen. This is that archival pen made by Mars Stadler, and it's a German ink. There's also a Micron pen that's a really excellent. And see, you can just freely come in and draw. These, of course, are those is that marbleizing spray. But just coming in with the black lines, and you can see again my path of light leading us through the picture, I think it adds a really nice ending to the piece. This one I haven't signed yet, but I think this is the way it goes. But this was really fun. You can see I added those gold shapes that just kind of danced their way through the picture and added some more color to really pop it up. Another thing you can do is simply divide it into shapes. Now the easiest is just to do some diagonals. And pretty much what we did in the lesson, I, if I paint on this side of the line, I reverse it here. And then I have a little path leading you to the next line. Then I do a reversal and a reversal. It's a fairly simple idea, but I think it adds a very nice way to end a picture. So this didn't start out with the lines in it. This was just something I came in and did later. Just took a pencil, divided it up. I did add some white shapes too that I'm going to show you next. Here's another set of shapes that are really very fun to do, almost to the point of being addicting. I'm serious. When I do this, I just simply drew, selected a shape, just a straight vertical. Then I came in with just a horizontal. So there's my cruciform. And then I started developing. OK, I went around the outside here, inside here, outside here inside and then this one I did pretty much all solid a couple little shapes breaking into it but uh, I and then in here I treat the inside of this like it's almost a separate painting I try to get some nice movement and design going but in the end it's it's the whole thing that you want to look at and I really love these they can go any number of ways I probably like it like that it takes me a while to sign these because I never know which way I want to hang them. Here's another fun one. You can see this was a really busy painting. And I was you weren't sure where to put your eyes. And I, I don't want to confuse the viewer. I like to give them a little help. So just by coming in with these horizontal and vertical shapes, again the cruciform, I think it really helps. So again, you stop at that shape and you go up here and you stop at that shape. And then you kind of fill in the shape. 
and then you come along this shape and it after you do a number of these they're not that difficult and they really can pull a painting together I think they add a lot now it's always hard to know when you're done one could say well that looks done and you can see all the fun I had adding these lines but I just have to show you how much fun it was so what I'm going to do is just glue like another loop in here so I'm going to put first of all the glue this is really important to get adequate amount of glue then I can just select the direction that I want this to go and look at that it's absolutely transparent it just it's wonderful Remember these loop the loops? I'm going to come in with another one. And the fun part is I can just sort of select, I can connect it to something that's already here. This might look nice. Hmm. Let me see. Oh, right in here. The glue is really important to get this down first. So we're going to put down the glue. Then we're going to put this down. And that easily we can create those fun loop-de-loops you see there. So I figure maybe about three more workshops I should be done. <laughs> so I think it's really fun to go larger and larger. Challenge yourself as you start getting into this. This is actually a pretty good sized piece here. And again, you can see the nice dark movement that I came through. And then I enriched it with some more colors. These are some jelly papers made out of leaves, actual leaves that we picked and printed. And when all was said and done, I decided to eliminate things. And I don't know, this is just something I like to do. Okay, this is a product that I really like to use to finish my paintings. And I think you're familiar with it. It's gesso. And this is what the acrylic artists use and the oil painters. I always keep a jar in my studio. And so I'm going to squeeze out some of the gesso. And then I'm going to add approximately 50% water. And I really like to use a flat brush. A flat brush is just perfect, I think, for coming in for all these shapes that you want to add. So what I can do is I can come in here with this lean mixture and I can just go through here and pull out some lovely white areas, some paths, look at path steps going through, leading the viewer through the picture. You can see there's some newspapers on here. If I think they're taking too much attention, I'll just clean them up. And they're still there, but they're pushed back a layer or two. And this is, this is one of my very favorite things to do. I, I finish a lot of paintings with this, this very technique right here. You can see I came in with some gray and some white and some soft warm white. So I had a cool white and a warm white and that's how I finished that picture. Very easy. Half gesso, half water, and I usually use a flat brush. I think it gives you the best design. Well, this really is the end now. Happy painting. <laughs> okay, this I lied when I said goodbye last time. I forgot that this has to be finished now. Before we can present this, you have to finish this surface because right now it's very vulnerable. Any water or moisture and it would be ruined. Because what we have here is watercolor on an acrylic background. So you have two choices. One is to give it, keep turning this and to give it at least four coats of this Krylon clear acrylic coating. I talked about this before, it's the one with the UV resistant. And just make sure you do the sides as well. My favorite thing to do is to use this Dorland's Wax Medium. And this is an awesome product. Now this is all in our tips. 
If you look below, it tells you how to prepare the canvas and how to finish it. But I just wanted this to be at the end of the painting, so you don't have to go looking for it. Because it's at the end of a fairly long tip. <laughs> so this is ready to go. I am using a plastic glove. And all we need to do is put a little bit of this on our fingers. And look at even delicate things like this. I, this just is amazing to me. That color sanding, it doesn't get disturbed one bit. So you just keep putting this on. And with your fingers, move it around. Now I usually try to be methodical, like I do the edges as I'm going by. And it looks even prettier with this on. It does give it a nice finish. So we'll start over here and move across. This wax it's the same wax they use when they're doing the, what's called the cold wax. So it's it's actually kind of hard to find nowadays. Everybody's using it, not only for this purpose, but for the cold wax. So we do have a good supply here, in case you're looking. Check out our online store. Okay, my edges, I can feel they're done. I can feel every part here is done. Maybe a little more. Amazing how you can feel under here. Oh! <laughs> Always sign it before you do this. We'll figure something out. I'm going to have to sign it in acrylic. You know what? It's not the first time. <laughs> okay, and this really is now my final act. We're going to take just a hair dryer. We're going to heat this up till it looks shiny, and that's it. I don't know if you can tell in there, but right now that entire surface is very shiny. It's beautiful. So now I generally just let this sit and dry for probably a couple days because it, it's sort of tacky for a little bit. But in two days. You won't, this shine will be gone and it will be just ready to hang on the wall.